conservatism at odds with environmentalism? Not according to our next guest, Benji Backer, who, co who founded the American Conser Conservation Coalition in 2017 in order to champion conservative solutions to environmental problems. Here to dive into and discuss his newly released book, The Conservative Environmentalist, is Benji himself. Welcome to Rising. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a big week. Yes, it's our pleasure. So let's get right into it. Uh, why did you write this book? And you know, as I just said, there is a perception that I think many of my friends on the progressive left have about conservatives disbelieving in or being indifferent to climate change or environmental harms. Um, what do you say to that? Well, in recent history, the narrative is absolutely different than what it used to be. In the 1980s, 90s, and early 2000s, Republicans were the ones who actually led the nation's biggest environmental efforts. I talk about this early on in the book, and you can all you can also look all the way back to Teddy Roosevelt. I mean, it was Republicans who led the creation of the EPA, creation of the Clean Water Act, creation of the Clean Air Act, and they were the champions, and they worked with Democrats. It used to be a nonpartisan issue. Today, it's become part of our culture wars once again, just like every other issue. And when Al Gore made the environment a issue that he campaigned on and won on in, in 2000, the right decided to run the other way. And the reality is conservatives care deeply about the environment. They want a voice at the table. But more importantly than that, for me as a young conservative who cares deeply about the environment myself, I also feel like today's environmental movement, kind of the opposite of what the right has been pushing, is also not working. The ways of Greta, the ways of AOC are very, very damaging to our economy, very damaging to our environment. And so while I'm not happy with where the right has been on this, I'm also not happy where the left has been on this. And really with this book, trying to chart a new environmental movement that gets conservatives back to the table because they used to be there and they do care deeply. They just need solutions that work for them. Kate Aronoff, uh, a journalist, has written on this subject and explicitly argues that capitalism is incompatible with mm -hmm. reigning in climate change. Uh, how do you negotiate the very different incentives of oil companies, energy producers, to profit from their existing oil wells and new efforts at uh, fracking and harvesting natural gas and the like, and the disaster that will accrue to the climate if they're able to do so? Well, I write about this a lot in the book. It's a very important question. It's a very important debate. I mean, I personally believe that capitalism is the best force for fighting climate change out of all the economic uh, forces that we have. And the reason I say that is, is that it's actually worked. We, You look at the countries that are reducing carbon emissions the most in the world, and it's the countries that actually have some of the freest economies, the most stringent governments in the whole world. You look at China, you look at uh, Russia, you look at uh, Venezuela, those countries are rapidly increasing their emissions, while countries like the United States and countries in Scandinavia, which actually have surprisingly very free economies, they are all reducing their emissions. And the reason that is, is not because oil and gas companies are sitting on the sidelines and saying, all right, guys, we're giving up. It's because capitalism creates technology and innovation to allow us to be sensible on the environment without hurting our pocketbooks. When the government tries to shove things down our throats, it ends up just increasing costs and being very hard to implement. People want to avoid that. And the government doesn't know how to solve these things better than the, the private sector does. So we have an opportunity here to not, it's not to say that the government doesn't have a role in this. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that the private sector and local communities, instead of the top-down government approach, is actually surprisingly the best way forward to solving environmental challenges. So what are some green policies or policies that environmentalists, uh, environmentalists like that you think more conservatives should get behind? Are we talking support for renewable energy? Are we talking carbon taxes? Um, you know, t talk to me about some of the proposals in your book. Well, I talk about really how the left's ideals within the Green New Deal actually is a bad New Deal for everyone. And I talk about how if it was 100% successful, we'd spend $93 trillion to reduce emissions across the world by 4%. So that sort of thing is not going to actually happen. Or if it does, it's going to harm us significantly from an economic standpoint. I think that the right needs to be more open to renewable energy, to electric vehicles, and not just hammer on everything that the left proposes. But I also think that the left is missing 
a lot of key parts of the solution. They're missing forest management. They're, mi they're missing sustainable agriculture. Uh, they're missing the importance of conservation of our ecosystems, something that uh, many conservatives know very well as, as hunters and anglers. These are things that actually do end up benefiting the environment a lot. And I think that you know, them missing key parts of, of the solutions is seen no, you know, no much, so much in the nuclear conversation. Conservatives have embraced nuclear for a very long time for other reasons, but, but energy sources like nuclear and natural gas and geothermal and hydropower and other sources that the left has ignored have been uh, really important for our reduction in carbon emissions in this country. So I think it's the right understanding that not all the things the left are proposing are bad from a like energy source standpoint, from a transportation standpoint. Uh, there are drawbacks, absolutely, and they shouldn't be mandated and picked as winners and losers. Uh, but also the left has to be open to some of these kind of outside their box ideas too. You mentioned that your view of how this has become a political issue is that because Al Gore ran on climate change, the Republicans ran in the opposite direction. My recollection of a burgeoning adult at the time is that Republicans have been against climate change for my entire sentient life. Don't you think there's a little bit of an oversimplistic read of how conservatives came to embrace energy um, as a priority and fossil fuel extraction as a priority? And what do you see as the role of lobbyists in special interest groups in influencing the Republican Party's direction? Well, I think that that's actually a huge misconception that Republicans have been deniers of climate change for a while. I mean, Republicans were the ones who created the national climate assessment for the first time. We had a national climate assessment for the first time, multiple times with a Republican president. The first treaty internationally, uh, the uh, Tokyo Protocol, um, that was signed into uh by a Republican president in the international conversation with the UN. So Republicans, and that, those were George H.W. Bush, that was Ronald Reagan. We had true Republicans leading on this, and it was not something that, that, that Republicans denied. Now, I with, do with think all due respect, fuel... Reagan, Teddy Roosevelt, Nixon, I, I take your point, but I'm asking about, for my entire life, I'm not quite that old, the Republican Party has been very anti climate change, engaged in a lot of climate change denialism following the model of the cigarette industry and denying the effects of cigarettes on people's health, literally opened that same playbook and played it all the way through. So again, I'm, I'm really curious about this question of what you see as big moneyed interest as affecting the direction that the Republican Party and some Democrats for sure have taken on the tension between climate needs and the financial needs of those industries. Well, I, I think that fossil fuel companies absolutely play a role in in the denial of climate change on the right, but I but I don't think that that's that's the main reason. I mean, I've visited conservative communities in all parts of this country and understood why they deny climate change. It's not because they don't believe climate change is real or because they're bought out by fossil fuel companies. It's because they're scared of the solutions. The solutions that have been proposed have really been bad for a, a, actually a huge chunk of Americans. I, I would argue the majority of Americans are harmed by the proposals that have been set on the table by the political left. So. That's not to say that, that fossil fuel companies don't play a role, but when Republicans, and I'm not saying that long ago, I mean, John McCain ran on a pro-climate platform in your lifetime, just, you know, Mitt Romney ran on a pro-climate uh, platform in your lifetime, and George W. Bush also ran on a pro-climate platform, despite being from a fossil fuel state. He was putting together tons of reports on climate change and, and also embracing a lot of clean energy. So. Like this, this isn't something where fossil fuel companies are just shutting down Republicans. It's Republicans being lazy and not proposing their own solutions that work for their communities and running the other way and just attacking the Democrats. That's what's been happening. And fossil fuel companies are actually more pro-climate right now than the Republican Party, which is kind of embarrassing. Mm. Just for the point, I'd like to point out that oil and gas companies spent more than $20, mil $20 million on lobbying the Republican Party members in the 2024 election cycle alone. I do think it's worth following the money in matters such as this uh, more I mean, than the renewable yeah, companies and the and the EV companies are doing the exact same thing I mean that's how our that's how our democracy is set they don't up. have and they're not that spending I think the scale of the spending is pretty important and looking at what is some of the biggest lobbyists uh, in the entire country are doing and how much influence they have is is pretty key here but I really appreciate you coming and talking to us today thank you